These are the only bits that are allowed to be metal. They have to be metal. Everything else will be printed or this sub doesn't happen. Many would argue the harsh conditions inside of a speaker motor are not suitable for printed parts, but I have a whole series dedicated to proving that wrong. I've attempted a subwoofer once with catastrophic results. This time I'm armed with more knowledge, experience, and persistence. This design should get us a decent low range six or seven inch woofer with a unique take on motor design. We will touch on that later. Now, are you ready to watch every win, fail, and fix on the journey? Because in less than 10 minutes, you'll find out if my weeks of development, modeling, and simulating actually pay off. Spoiler, I have issues. That thumping in your chest, the music you can feel more than hear. If you've ever been to a concert, you know exactly the feeling. Now I spent weeks chasing that feeling with plastic, persistence, and long nights simulating and tweaking designs to perfect the vision. These plates, courtesy of PCBWay and their CNC services, are precision perfect. I sent them the files and they materialized my vision. And with rapid turnaround time, I had parts in hand in days. Now my prints have to match that tolerance. I'm dealing with tenths of millimeters for alignment of the motor, so these prints must be perfect. However, even flawless prints do not guarantee a smooth assembly. These fun little things are just a fraction of the size and strength of the Danger Donuts we will be using for this build. Now I don't recommend that you play with magnets at home, but these are the magnets that I'm using for the build. They're 90 millimeter ceramic ring magnets. They pinch, they bite, and pulverize fingers without warning. Respect is mandatory, and safety gear, it's not optional. Subscribing, though, totally optional. But if you do, you won't miss out on any of the new projects. Now, to install those magnets, we find the north pole using a compass, and that side goes up. Slide them onto the printed holder, and install all these pretty machine plates from PCBWay to finish out the motor. And now, half the motor's done. Let's find a coil. The coil is the largest one I've ever used. It has to fit over our 90 millimeter pole. We're shooting for six and a half ohms of wire in two layers. Some simple math gives us the exact number of windings. Load the former on the hub and start winding. I feared this would happen. As the former gets larger, the concentric stability fades, which leads to a not so desired elliptical shape. In testing, I found this to be a result of too much tension on the winding or kind of a loose fitting holder. We will up the holder size by a fraction of a millimeter and wind a touch slower to reduce tension. And with those fixes implemented, we have a somewhat usable coil. Now, for how the motor fits. See this gap? It's not perfectly concentric. Luckily, with the amount of experience I have, I foresaw this as a possibility and I added a set of screw holes to the motor holder to move both the top plate and top pole to perfect concentricity. I'll use these printed filler gauges to get me within 0.05 millimeters centered. Now that we have all the parts, I think it's time to assemble, test, and listen. First up, assemble. A 15 second montage. So does it sound as good as it looks? Now sealed or not sealed, it's always the question on subwoofers. Sealed enclosures give nice roll off, but vented are always louder. The best method is let the speaker decide. Pull parameters from it and see what the QTS says. If it's under 0.7, go vented. Otherwise, go sealed. Let's test away. Now I'm not a huge fan of sealed, but the speaker spoke and sealed it is. Now, slight issue. Unfortunately, maxing out my build volume for the subwoofer left no room for a printed enclosure, and traditional boxes take far more time to assemble correctly. Couple this with the fact that I ran into time constraints from the complications of making a large surround, printing them was a nightmare, and printed molds in silicone, two-part urethane, that was even more of a mess. Don't recommend that. On that note, the complete speakers will happen shortly, but here's where I have to ask your opinion. Would you rather a full length feature build on a traditional speaker box using 3D printed parts and tools or a 60 second short containing only the build montage and playtest? Answer in the comments below, let me know what you want and we'll move forward with that. Now, before we finish here, I wanna talk about that motor. It's weird and that the magnet resides in the center pole 
as opposed to the outside ring, which is typical. The pros to this, it's cheaper. I can use a 90mm magnet and a 90.5mm former. In a traditional method, I would have needed a magnet with a 150mm OD and a 90mm ID. The cons though is reduced magnet strength and the coil gap will never exceed one Tesla. I just wanted a short lesson on that motor design and why I made that decision. Now I'll play a little short 15 second free air music sample. It will not sound good, but it's proof of concept that this subwoofer does in fact work and we can move forward on box building. Well, it didn't perform as expected, although that's not a bad thing. Even failures are learning experiences. So everything I did wrong to end up here, I can fix and fix it I will, as version 3 will happen and it will be better than this one. I will, however, try to make it sound a little better when that enclosure is created. So make sure you've ticked the bell and like this video for the algorithm and such. And on that note, thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next video.